I wanted to share with you uh, one of the techniques I developed for the Jelly Arts printing plate uh, and how I can keep the colors separated and create a quick color pattern uh, by using the brayer and the jelly plate. I'm going to take this out of the package and put it aside. Put the jelly plate down. The good thing about the jelly plate that has enough sticky, to, sticky surface that it can adhere to the table and not slide around. I've got various papers here. I've got some deli wrap, which is uh, essentially unwaxed sandwich paper, and some Bristol paper, Bristol board, which is very smooth. So smooth surfaces really like the jelly plate. It's not particularly useful with watercolor paper because there are too many ch uh, variations in the surface texture. So a smooth paper is much better for using on a jelly plate. Uh, I've got a brayer nearby and I've got some colors that mix well, some opaque and transparent. For my transparent, I have turquoise thalo and Hansa yellow. And I also have, for opaque, some titanium white and some teal. And for a little bit of sparkle, I've got some iridescent gold deep. So I'm going to start out with how I set up the pattern. I put individual drops, sort of in a regular pattern on the surface, tiny drops, not huge amounts of paint. And then since I want, a, I want to have some mix, color mixing going on, I'm adding in a couple of yellows and a bit of white for opacity. Otherwise, it'll all be transparent. You'll see what will happen when we get to this. So the trick is not to overmix with my brayering. So I'm going to do a quick swipe and then this way, so I keep the pattern. I don't want to lose that pattern. So I can start at the bottom and use what was there. And if I have extra, I reach over for an extra piece of paper, I can just brayer off the extra on a piece of paper so I don't waste the paint. I'll just leave that as my, my paint um, catcher. So I'm going to use first the deli paper. I've cut it to fit the size of the jelly plate. I'm going to lay it down, and I'm just going to rub it gently to transfer the paint to the paper. And when I lift, the pattern should transfer. It leaves me with extra paint here. So right now, I'm going to use the white, add a little bit more white so I can mix up the pattern a tiny bit. Go back in and brayer this over. Just add more white to the pattern. Offload. We'll use this as the second one. We're going to reprint on this paper that I'm lifting from right now. I'm just going to let it dry and we'll reprint from that. Then we'll do another mix with the gold. You see this is called a ghost print where it gives you slightly, um, a slightly lighter version, and I like the way the pattern is maintained. One of the reasons why I do this thing is so I can, this particular technique is so I can keep the pattern of the color and also allow some of the color mixing going on. I'm going to add some gold to our turquoise thalo and do another layer on top of It's not so important to clean your plate in between if you're using similar colors, but you can see how this plays out. We'll add another. That one just did a little bit too much paint, but it's okay. We'll do. We'll catch it anyway. We can always, if we want to add some extra pattern, if we've smeared, can just come in with a blade, create pattern to break up the part that didn't work right. Let's just do this. Take this one. Change. I switched the pattern direction so that I can pick up the pattern going this way. The more layers you do, the more complex the paper becomes. And these papers make great additions to mixed media compositions um, if you're using the deli paper. There, look at that pattern. 
That really turned out nicely. I like the way the gold sparkles. Now let's just lift this one. I can lift it off onto this. Turn it this way. Nice, okay. Now let's get some opaque in here. This is teal, which is a opaque turquoise in the same family as our others. I'm gonna do a little bit more paint, but just one swipe across them so I can have a regular pattern. And then we'll go over here, transfer. And let's switch to a piece of Bristol paper, which captures the paint very nicely as well because it's smooth. Okay, so a nice clean pattern on that one. If I want to pick up any of the extra paint, we can go back into here. This is less printed on this end, so I'm going to add some of this to the end of that one. Oh, look how nice that picked that up. Now let's put this part over here. There we go. Let's add one more pass on this with the gold and the, uh, the yellow. Then I'll show you a few variations of where you can go with this. First, we'll pass with this, make a stripe. Switch this this way. It's always important to rub the back of it smoothly. Don't, not too heavy, just enough to make sure that all the Paper gets in contact with the jelly plate. There we go. Okay, great. Now, last one is yellow. One more layer of yellow, and then we'll move on. There we go. You can see that every pull is slightly different depending on what you do to the surface. I like that I can offload my extra paint either on the jelly plate or on a paper and just pick up whatever's left without wasting the paint. And if you have used a lot of paint for another project, the jelly plate's a great way for you to use that extra paint and for you to create even patterns that can be used as parts of larger compositions. Just for an example, I want to show you a few of the combinations that I brought along for you to see. This was done over an old piece of paper and I did more layers on top of it so I could continue to build on the ones we've already done today and get more and more richness to the surface. This one's done with a lot of metallics. You can see the dots because they are more transparent in the surface. This is a simpler one on a dark blue with some white. So you could lay down a solid layer of color and then do your printing over it. And similarly, over a mixed uh, color background, you can do a bright orange dot. So just depending on what you do for the undersurface, the pattern will reveal itself each time in a different manner. I hope you'll get your jelly plate out if you have one, and if not, think about an investment in one. They've been, it's been a very practical tool for me in the studio and has led to many great adventures in color. Mm -hmm.